The house I lived in was an old, dilapidated, pre-war two-story building with creaking floors, shabby walls, and a shared kitchen, toilet, and shower. And the cockroaches, who loved these walls, were also our common problem. Though to tell the truth, it didn't bother anyone in this house, at least on my floor. The old grandparents were living out their lives next door, and cockroaches were probably the last thing on their minds. Only at the end of the corridor, near the common kitchen, lived a young guy and a girl. Students, I guess, renting a room. They often had friends over. The party usually lasted until the morning. Puked up floors in the hallway and insects eating the filthy stuff. It's a regular thing. And the only thing that saved me from all this nastiness was a good metal door and double-sided tape, which I glued around the edges so that the cockroaches did not get into my den. This is, let's say, an introduction so that you understand where and how everything happened. And yes, the story is not really about cockroaches and the horrors of dorm life. It's about something else. Other horrors that started about a week ago. It was late at night. I came home from work and the atmosphere in the hallway was familiar to me. Older women in housecoats gossiped in the kitchen, filling it with cigarette smoke, if only to block out the constant stench of alcoholics and old men. Good evening. I said hello and quickly went to my room, turning the key in the lock three times and immediately clanking the electric kettle. It was warm and cozy at home. I didn't want to go out the door, but I had to. There was no shower in the room. Having done all the work quickly, I finally drank hot tea and got into bed and my tired eyes immediately closed. During the night, I woke up several times. In general, this is not a rare phenomenon. My sleep is quite sensitive, and I can wake up at the slightest squeak, no matter how tired I was when I went to bed. I've had students making noise, or drunkards banging on the door right across the hall from my room or something else. There were many reasons, but that night it was something else. From below me, there was a sound, so distinct, as if someone was moving something heavy on the floor, like a closet or a dresser or something. I looked at the clock with sleepy eyes. It's the beginning of two in the morning. Had I lost my mind? I was surprised and, throwing on a robe, went to the bathroom. By the way, it was at the same place as the shower, at the end of the corridor. I didn't know my neighbors and I didn't want to get acquainted and I didn't see any point in listening to constant old people's problems or gossip. Our floor had a rough idea of who was who, but below me, who lived below me, I had no idea. That sound downstairs went on for a long time. I was tossing and turning, hoping it would stop at last. It's the middle of the fucking night. They're rearranging the place, aren't they? People have to get up early for work. Anyway, I put up with it, I put up with it. I wasn't going to go to confront them, of course. It's my nature. I put up with everything. I put up with everything. But sometimes my patience breaks down and then you have to hide. That night, the only thing I did was banging on the radiator. We have, in fact, only one and the ringing, noisy neighbors did not miss their ears. After maybe a couple minutes, the grinding downstairs, thank goodness, stopped. And I took the opportunity to fall asleep. Never woke up again that night. Maybe they kept making noise. Anyway, I didn't hear anything. The next morning was pretty standard. Coffee, cigarette, shoulder bag, and off to the bus. It's freezing outside. Good thing the bus stop wasn't too far from home. I was in such a hurry to catch the bus that only at the stop I remembered how an old man looked out from one of the rooms on the first floor. I opened the door a little bit. I was coming down the stairs then. Our eyes met so much that it seemed to me as if he was waiting for me. I don't know, judging by the layout of the room, that's where the grinding came from last night. Yeah, that's right. That's the room. There was no doubt when I returned home in the late afternoon and walked down the first floor corridor and noticed the door. A time-ravaged wooden door, a bit rotten at the threshold, and there were cockroaches crawling inside it and underneath. Gross. This night around the same time, I woke up again to an eerie scraping sound. This time it was louder. It was that fucking grandpa dragging something in there again. God, you fucking pension. How many times can you do this? Wiping my eyes and picking up a slipper from the floor, I grumbled and started hitting the radiator with it as hard as I could. The grinding stopped, but it didn't stop. 
I continued to pound on the radiator so that the old stump would finally calm down. It took about five more minutes. Finally, when the noise stopped, I turned on my other side and fell asleep. Except the fucking grandfather woke me up again. And judging by the numbers on the clock, I hadn't slept very long. This time the grinding was replaced by howling. It was like I was in a freaking gun house, where everyone was either in pain or just plain fucked up. I had no energy or desire to get up from the heated bed, get dressed and go to the first floor. So I had to repeat the procedure with a slipper and a radiator. But this time it didn't help. Still, I had to get up and go and sort things out. Although, to be honest, for some reason I thought there was some retarded grandfather living in that room, and it wouldn't do any good to figure it out. But still, I put on my jacket and pants. Sleepy and angry, I went down to the first floor. There was no bell at the door. I had to knock. Not hard, not hard at first, barely touching the ugly door. But when I couldn't even hear footsteps behind it, I started banging seriously. When somewhere in the depths of the room I heard shuffling footsteps, and then the turning of the key in the lock, the door creaked, and in a centimeter slit looked out the old man, standing there looking at me like a sheep at a new gate. Dear, I of course I understand everything, that maybe you're renovating there, I don't know. But have you seen the time? Can we please be quiet? It's night time, people have to get up for work, and you're moving things around moaning. You can hear everything. He's standing there, looking so intently straight into my eyes and moving his lips as if he wants to say something. And then he says in a husky voice, don't bang on the radiator. Why are you banging on the radiator? Grandpa, are you kidding me? I raised my voice in anger. What do you mean, don't knock? You're doing a hell of a lot of things at night. I promise you, next time I'll call the police. In response to my speech, the old man only slammed the door in my face went up to his room. It's quiet. I went to my pillow and I didn't feel like sleeping. This old fart woke me up and I have to get up for work in four hours. Well, what to do? I took out my phone and lay like that, scouring the vastness of the World Wide Web, hoping to fall asleep. The moans on the floor below sounded at the hour when I started to fall asleep. Monotonous, heavy moans, but good thing they couldn't wake me up that time. And despite those damn sounds, I managed to fall asleep. The next day after work, I decided to find out from the neighbors, say, in the hallway, who lives in that room behind the rotten door. As usual, there was a full house in the kitchen in the evening. I caught the moment when the local ants gathered for a smoke break and approached them. I apologize. They turned their sagging faces in my direction. I was wondering, do you know who lives in room 17? Is that on the first floor? The drunken voice of one of the neighbors called out. Yes, on the ground floor. I confirmed. They looked at each other in bewilderment. I don't know. Maybe it's someone who's there again. What do you mean? Well, no one's lived there for like three years. Why? I can't sleep well. It's the room below me. The bitch is moaning, moving things around on the floor in the middle of the night. I went to check it out, but some grandpa opened the door. What grandfather? One of the neighbors got up from her creaky chair. I didn't even see him. He opened the door a little and looked out with one eye. And yes, I saw him this morning on my way to work, but I didn't get a good look at him. So Sasha, right? That's your name? Yes, that's it. Sasha, no one's lived in that house for three years. I doubt anyone has moved in. The aunt who told me all this stood across from me. By the way, she's the biggest fan of Hawthorne tincture and vodka, but I could tell she sobered up when I told her about the old man downstairs. If I'd had relatives, they'd have come a long time ago. The room's been empty for, what, like how long? About three years. Trust me, I've been here 20 years. I could see that in her, of course. Yeah, who did I see then? I wondered. I don't know about that. It's a hell of a thing. Her words gave me goosebumps. Her words gave me goosebumps. The thing is, my grandfather lived there. It's been a long time since the old stump lived and died. I can't tell you exactly when, because I don't know. I only remember that the stench was terrible, and it took a long time to find the source. And when they did, his corpse was bloated and worms were eating it. Maybe you saw him, her drinking buddies laughed. I see. 
Shin Goat. Thinking, I turned around and went to my room. Who am I listening to? Am I out of my mind already? Three drunk women with swollen faces like bees, and I'm complaining about my life. Yeah, I'm done for. But still, after that conversation, a strange uneasiness settled inside. Every day I'd go up and down the stairs. I would glance at that very door. Empty, according to my neighbor. The fidgeting continued every night, and every night I'd bang on the radiator to get the fucking old man to calm down. It wasn't long before things started happening that I still can't get my head around. Yeah, I think it started after I called the police. One of those restless nights. Banging on the radiator didn't help. In fact, it didn't help the door either. Nobody answered the door. I had to call the cops. They came quickly, apparently having coffee nearby. Two big, burly guys came in and asked what was wrong. But I outlined the situation to them, and together we went to the unfortunate door again. They knocked, and there was silence. Open up, police, there was no answer. As if there really was someone behind the door. No one was there. The bogeyman politely explained to me that they would not break into his house, because noise at night is no reason for that. Anyway, they turned around and left. I went outside for a breath of nicotine, lit a cigarette, and suddenly the light in the window on my right came on. I look there. I see my grandfather standing there. First floor, you can see, everything is fine. Such a dim, dim bulb. It lit up the room a little bit. And he's standing under the wall. Yeah, that's what you do, bitch, I thought to myself, and I went back out the door. Apparently, he saw a car pull up with lights on. So he pretended like nobody was home. I go to him, start banging on the door. Open up, what are you trying to do? This time I apparently got him, and the door soon opened. Just like last time, only a part of his face showed through the small slit, and as the crazy grandfather began to gibber, why do you bother me all the time? Why are you banging on the radiators? You're in your last hour. Don't bother him. Don't, don't bother him. His voice rose with each word, and soon it became a shriek that sent shivers down my spine and back toward the stairs. The door gradually opened, and I was already standing by the stairs when a hand appeared in the doorway. The dim entryway lamp was enough to see it. A dirty limb with long, peeling fingernails was trying to fumble for something on the wall. At that hour I ran up the stairs. Already in our corridor I felt a little better. There were people there, unlike the first one. That's when I asked myself a question. Are all the tenants of the first floor satisfied with such a neighbor? Why doesn't anyone complain about him? Why doesn't anyone try to get through to him? I've never seen one. Although I can't remember the last time I saw people on the first floor at all, I found the answer to all these questions quite soon. The next morning, the very alcoholic woman who told me that no one lived in the apartment knocked on my door. She became my alarm clock. I wanted to ask for some pennies I didn't have enough for a bubble. But after yesterday's events, I looked at her story from a different angle. I gave her the money and started asking her about it in detail. Who, what, and so on. She said she'd seen everything she knew in the kitchen. All she said was that if there was someone in there, it was best not to bother them. Yeah, that's very witty. And how can I sleep if she sits there crazy and moans all over the house? So what can live there if, according to her, the room is empty. Is the old man who lived there long dead or didn't die? Stop, stop, I don't understand anything. The aunt went, apparently happy, to the store, but I stopped her. Tell me, is this old man really dead? Only now it began to come to me that in this house there is really some devilishness going on. There was no doubt about it when there was a knock on my door in the middle of the night. At first I thought I was dreaming, but the knock was quite insistent and when I opened my eyes, it hadn't disappeared. I went to the door, looked through the peephole. There was no one. Strange, I must have been dreaming. As soon as I stepped away from the door, the knock came again. Oh, for fuck's sake. I quickly turned the key in the lock and opened the door. I looked first to one side, down the hall. No one's there. The bulb just flickers, that's all. On the other side, it must have burned out and half the whole hallway was in darkness. Only the kitchen light was on. I look into the darkness. One second. Two. Three. 
I look and I realize there's someone right outside my door. Someone standing there breathing heavily. Suddenly a silhouette begins to emerge in the darkness, and I feel someone coming right up to me. My head snapped, and I tried to run home and close the door, but someone was holding it from the other side, so hard that I couldn't move it out of place. The stench hit my nose at the same moment. So much so that I started to feel dizzy. Running into the room I flicked on the light, but nothing happened. I grabbed my phone off the bed. I didn't need it in those seconds. To see someone crossing the threshold of my home, clumsily staggering, leaning against the walls, the intruder approached me. I swear to the gods. That's when I heard the familiar groans. It was him. It was that grandfather from downstairs. That dead grandfather. I just turned away for a second to get my phone and flashlight. He'd already moved right up to me. Even though I was standing at the other end of the room, how did he cover a few meters so fast? I didn't hear his footsteps, bitch. That's when I saw him in all his glory, if only for a split second. A pale, bloated old man, stinking, surrounded by a swarm of flies. But far from the flies, it was his stomach that caught my attention. It was ripped open, and from it almost fell out already brown, rotted, scoured. He grabbed my head then with his nasty, filthy hands. I tried to resist, tried to break free from his clinging grip, hit him wherever I could, but he didn't care. He pulled me to the radiator, which I kept banging on. And squeezing my head tighter, he began to beat me with the iron pipe. The terrible pain in the forehead. The first blow. The second already felt the blood running down my face. Then the third, the fourth, and I lost consciousness. Although, to be honest, I thought he was going to smash my head into mincemeat. I don't know how I survived. I don't know. I only came to when the neighbors came in through the open door of my room. They saw me in a pool of blood and called an ambulance. I remember vaguely. I was in the hospital. The room was so nice. The police came several times, asking me what had happened that night, but I couldn't explain anything clearly. They were waiting for me to recover. And the doctors wondered, how come I survived? People usually end up with such injuries, one of the young nurses told me while changing a bandage. If you think that was the end of it, and they lived happily ever after, I hasten to disappoint you. I heard those moans in the hospital too, and no, I didn't dream or imagine it. I heard those sounds for real, and when I opened my eyes, he was standing in the corner of the room, where, by the way, I was alone. And he was mockingly tapping on the radiator as if reminding me who he was and what this was all about. By happy coincidence, a nurse came into the room at the same moment. And when she turned on the lights, the thing was gone. Some man who'd been in a car accident was assigned to me. I guess he made sure Grandpa never came back to the room again. When I was finally discharged, I went back to the dorm. I packed up all my belongings and moved to another house. I rented an apartment somewhere else. Older, of course, but without neighbors like that. I put this little room on the market. Now I was afraid of every rustle. Even in a new apartment. Slept with the fucking lights on. And I was afraid to see him again. Hear those goddamn moans. But thank God, everything was quiet. He didn't bother me. At least not yet. But that's what I found out when I went back to the dorm about a week later to get some of the things I hadn't managed to steal the first time. I overheard the neighbors talking in the common kitchen. As it turned out, the first floor of our dorm was not particularly populated. Almost all the rooms were empty. Only three had people living in them. I don't know who they were, but they said they found them in that very room. They were found because the stench was all over the floor. I noticed it too, by the way. It hadn't cleared out by the time I got here. Apparently they didn't like the old man's loud moans either so they risked knocking on his door and expressing their displeasure, just like I did. But they were less fortunate.